Welcome to my world. I'd like to thank the YouTube organization itself because today happens to be the 25th of May 2022, the celebration of Africa. Africa due to Victor's was celebrated at Landmark, Victoria Island. The event was very beautiful. So many kids handed over. I have just started not up to three months of uh, creating YouTube uh, events that I educate people, very educative uh, uh, videos, and I've been recognized as a creator. I never knew it's so easy to become a creator just within uh, a trickle of a high, and uh, gradually the sky is going to be the new. That encouragement I have received, I Thank you to most more for the encouragement given to the youth because the youth were more they have number. I, I, I wouldn't say I got an adult there. I mean there are people in my, my contemporaries. But I thank God nevertheless that I am doing something that is recognized. Today I shall talk on the heart. The heart is a very vital organ. So the anatomy of the heart and the biomarkers is what I shall dwell on today so that we can understand more how we can maintain the most problematic because I, I repeat it's, it's the, it has the greatest to me the greatest number of problems because every part, every area the heart works so much that you can understand why it has so many problems. Let us take a look at how the heart works anyway. The heart works by pumping blood to every part, every cell, every tissue, every organ of the body, including to itself. So when the heart does this, it's able to pass oxygen to all the cells as well as the nutrients that will make the cells of the body very healthy. But now, look at the situation where if you lack oxygen, you die. So likewise, the cells of the body. So if there is a problem of oxygen failing to reach any of these cells, they die. So the important work that the heart does must be recognized. Very complex too. Then it passes all the nutrients. So if the nutrients are lacking, all the all we take in are broken down into smaller, simpler molecules so that the heart can now pass it and the cells can easily assimilate it. The cells cannot eat the macro molecules that we uh, take in as uh, meat, chicken and what have you. But the, the body enzymes and the digestive system really breaks it down for it to enter into the bloodstream and the heart will now come with oxygen, oxygenated blood goes through the heart while the, the, the oxygenated blood, the one containing the carbon side, returns back to the heart before it, it goes into the pulmonary to the lungs. But these problems that the heart may have has to do with the diets we now take that may now occlude the bed vessels and give the heart greater work to do. So when the heart is pumping, it is under stress. Then the blood pressure is automatically rises and the heart itself may need to enlarge itself. But in so doing, this blockage, the narrowing of the blood vessels can also deny the heart. The heart has the coronary arteries that are supplying itself oxygenated blood and the nutrient for it to also survive and live successfully. But when these, these are in source of life, that cells, the cells of the heart, that will start dying. That is where the laboratory can help. There are uh, parameters, there are proteins like treponin that we can estimate and say, oh, the quantity, because when the heart cells die, it produces this treponin. But when you find them in high number, it's what that is very remarkable to, to one that this heart is doing. Then the lipid profile tells, when you talk of cholesterol, 
blocking, narrowing the vessels. By the time we are able to check your blood vessel uh, serum samples to collect from you, we are able to see your values are high, showing that you are prone to. There are so many things that I expose you to as regards how the laboratory helps you to notify you of the risk factor. When the values of the risk factors are increasing, then you know you have going towards having serious heart disease, heart attack, or heart failure. Like I said, the heart itself has so many problems, so many diseases. You can, when you take it just from the covering, the periphery, you can then call that one, that is the membrane covering the outer part of the heart. It's called the pericardium. Uh, and when there is infection, inflammation of that area by bacteria or viruses, you have pericarditis. The same thing, the endocarditis as well as myocarditis. And like I said, the, the myocarditis is just an infection of the heart muscles. But this can go on to now block Blood supply. Once the oxygen does not get to the cell, the cell itself dies. So the heart cells can also die, and that is when it leads to myocardial infarction. They have found the relationship, a correlated relationship between myocarditis and myocardial infection. There are five organic the hypertensive heart disease, the coronary heart disease, material endocarditis, and the uh, all these really, really serious uh, uh, parts in the problems that will overwhelm the heart. But by the time you do various tests, the most important of all these tests is the ECG, electrocardiogram, which is very popular. But the laboratory aspect, which has nothing to do with this is what I shall dwell upon as we move into the next uh, to the next stage which I shall expose with my previous slide. So if you like the presentation please click the like button. And remember like I said there is that relationship that should really be established between the medical laboratory science myself and you and uh, other medical laboratory scientists that that symbiotic relationship will expose your health, present situation of your health to you, which you can then use to continue to manage your health or go for serious treatment with the physicians or uh, as the cardiologists, because the cardiologists are experts in the uh, cardiac problems. So the treatment aspect is seriously the area of problem. That even the, there is the S3 that you can also of the heart, but all these are outside the purview of the medical laboratory scientists. So the ones I am talking about, which we shall dwell so much on as we go into the next slide, are the biomarkers, the biomarkers, we call them biomarkers, that we let us know where the derailment the way we are going and put a check in. So click the like button, click the subscription and click the notification. Health is wealth, knowledge is power. When you combine both power and wealth, well, you enjoy health in abundance, life in abundance. See you. Welcome back. Now to the overview, the heart anatomy and biomarker. We talk of the anatomy of the heart, the layman's view, government view, the worldwide view, and WHO view. The lab diagnosis excluding echogram, ECG, and the X-ray. And then I mentioned something on the treatment. Anatomy of a uh, normal heart. You can see from this picture, the red color indicates oxygenated blood coming 
uh, going through the hair altar and passing. The blue color is the oxygenated blood returning back to the heart and uh, being taken to the pulmonary valve, I mean, uh, arteries to uh, really be oxygenated. Layman's view of the heart is the heart is a symbol of love and affection between people. The heart is at the center of the chest. Meanwhile, it's on the left side of the chest. The heart is the storehouse of emotion. The government of Nigeria view is they see the heart as a cardiovascular disease that is not only the heart but the surrounding vessel as well. It is considered uh, significant that 11% of over 2 million non communicable deaths in Nigeria annually happens, and the cardiovascular disease are uh, just the predominant uh, cause. Uh, the risk factor, tobacco use, unhealthy diet, obesity, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol. WHO and worldwide view. The WHO sees uh, heart disease as cardiovascular as well as the leading cause of death globally. An estimated 17.9 million die from CVD, which represents 32% of all global death so you can imagine and the, the your risk of heart disease increases with age that is because the heart is always pumping and pumping and uh, it is very common with men to die from heart diseases and uh, the age ranges the heart diseases are listed coronary artery disease heart arrhythmia heart failure heart valve disease pericardial disease cardiomyopathy disease and congenital heart disease the heart is your whole muscle, so you can expect all the problem are muscle problem. The trepolin one I and T is indicative of some uh, the heart failure is uh, likely going to have the cholesterol is also telling us that your heart is getting problem. The low density protein is uh, very bad. And the myocardial biopsy using the H and E can help the diagnosis that is either infection, bacteria, or, and the PCR can also identify the virus. Lab diagnosis continued. Hemostine is also the high level increased heart and blood vessel disease. Um, hemoglobin A1 is also very useful when it is above normal. You start suspecting diabetics, and diabetic patients are becoming obese and gradually blocking the vessels. The creatinine kinase is a muscle enzyme and uh, it's indicative when you are having high. The same thing, SGPT, SGOT, the liver, also present in the liver, but once there is no liver problem, then you can be suspicious of uh, it as being heart problem. CR protein indicates vascular inflammation means high risk of uh, heart and blood vessel disease if higher than that urine are like we know protein do not have to come out in urine but when it start coming out you start suspecting a serious problem and uh, the last but not the least is uh, the treatment when you want to treat is either you do the surgery where you talk of angioplasty or where the to, uh, blood clots are they are lice you thrombo lysis or where you use antibiotic and uh, antiviral if this antibiotic is bacteria if it's antiviral is a virus is